let's see. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to um, the St. George's Church. Um, now, today is um, the 30th, the Friday 30th of October 2020, and I am um, the Father Tamin. I'm the vicar of um, this parish, St. George's, of en uh, St. George's Enfield in Freezy Water. We are very close to um, M25, or, um, you know, the Enfield Lock, um, Enfield Lock Parish is actually our neighbouring parish. So if you don't know us, you know, um, welcome. If you are, you know, familiar, if you are one of our regular you know, visitors, I, I shouldn't say regular customers, but <laughs> you see what I mean. Oh, welcome, welcome. Um, good evening, Jenny, Saron, uh, Carol. Um, welcome. Now, oh, is there anyone who are new to us? Good evening, Ronnie. How are you? Janet, um, Janet Steer, good evening, good evening, Janet. I think I'm not really familiar with um, the, your name. Welcome, welcome. We always welcome to, um, you know, lovely, um, love to see any new people joining in, um, join us. Good evening. Um, yeah, today is, um, you know, a Friday. Uh, I hope you had, um, you know, a good Friday. Um, my Friday was okay. Um, well, a bit, you know, a slow morning. And then, oh, good evening, Sharon. Yes, um, <laughs> twice in one day. It was lovely to see, um, you know, quickly to see you, um, Sharon, in Enfield Town this afternoon. Um, uh, good evening, Carol. Welcome. Welcome. I've come here with my, um, you know, coffee, so um, it's nice and warm here. Well, not terribly cold to be in the church, but holding, um, you know, the coffee in my hand, um, this, is, this is quite nice, nice and warm. Mm. Feeling good. I feel good. Okay, um, my Friday was okay. Um, this is the end of, the weekend of um, St. Drew, well, the half term here in, in, in our parish school. So I, I pray and I hope you, most of you, um, you know, are having um, you know, a good holiday or good half term break now. Good evening, Nora. Um, welcome, welcome back. Um, and then anyone who are new to us, just, um, just um, um, leave a comment um, so that I can see and I may be um, able to share um, the, your comments um, with, with others. Um, <laughs> let me just um, breathe. Ah, oh, yes, this is what I need. This is what I need. Good evening, Violet. Good evening, Judith. Welcome. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to tell you something about myself. Yeah? <laughs> yes, about myself, you know, about me. <laughs> Good evening, Isabel. Um, hello from Sydney. Oh, welcome, welcome. Are you still there? <laughs> we are waiting for you to come back. But anyway, welcome. Lovely to see you. Um, I'm going to tell you something about um, myself, um, not my, um, my name or anything, because you know me and I'm the vicar here in this parish, but I may be able to tell you a bit of you know, the background of, of myself and, and tell, tell, tell you something about my journey, you know, my journey, you know, what, what journey that you, you're talking about, yes, the journey from the beginning until now. But don't worry, it's not going to be very long. <laughs> Good evening, Cathy. Penny, welcome. Um, as, as many of you, the most of you know, um, that I was born and bred in um, the South Korea. Um, I'm um, now in mid-40s. Um, I know, I look much younger than my age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other day, um, I went to um, um, you know, the Tesco, and I wanted to buy, I was trying to buy some, you know, the cans of beers, you know, and then um, the staff members, you know, um, the cashier asked me to uh, um, take my mask off. And, you know, people still ask me. <laughs> they don't necessarily see my white hairs here, but, you know, oh, I'm only joking. But anyway, I was born and bred in South Korea. I do have siblings. Um, I do have a, um, a younger brother who is um, younger than me by three years. He's also, um, you know, Anglican priest. Well, actually, he was ordained, you know, a priest before, earlier than me. So he's a bit more senior if we follow the day of you know, ordination, but he's my younger brother. And, and um, that's all my, um, you know, my own siblings, and um, yeah, that, that's all I have. 
Maureen, um, the genius, hello from Melbourne. Yeah, well, welcome. I'm just telling you, um, telling all of you, um, you know, um, about myself, my background. And that I should say I was um, not a terribly bad nor naughty boy when I was, you know, little. So I was a bit, you know, I'm not going to go for any, you know, details, but you can, you can, <laughs> you can um, imagine, you know, and then I'm going to leave it to your imagination. But I was, let's say, a fairly a good boy. And if you just, if, if you just, um, you know, had a chance to ask my mum and then, you know, oh, how was he? Was he, was he a good boy? And probably my mum will say, um, say yes, he was a good boy, yeah. And then, but I know me, I know, I remember what I did. So if I just ask me a question, was I a good boy? Uh, yes, it's just still. <laughs> now, that's me. And then I went to um, university, and then when I went to the university soon, the whole South Korea um, had to actually struggle you know, financially. So the whole country was you know, flashing, you know, financially, it was absolutely unstable. So my father, who used to be, um, um, he used to do lots of things, you know, he's, he's a very artistic person. And once he was um, a music director and a choir master in the Seoul Anglican Cathedral, Anglican Cathedral in Seoul, and that's where my parents um, met together, and then they got married there, and then, um, yeah, so he was quite musical, but he was also a businessman. And, and um, he's a very artistic person. He, he, he's, he's alive. And all my parents, they still live in, in, back in South Korea. And um, that's a bit of, you know, the background. And, um, yeah, on, until um, my early stage in the university, my life was just as straightforward. I never had a dream of um, being a priest. Um, well, one of my previous, you know, ex-vicars back in South Korea mentioned this. Oh, you know, young Taemin, you know, being a priest is wonderful things. And then my response was, oh, ho, 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 never, never, be, never. That was me. <laughs> and then even um, my mother, well, my father, I did mention it, you know, um, just to say one word, oh, don't push him. I don't know why he said, he, he never said, no, he's not going to be a priest or something. He said, maybe he knew my father knew the clergy life probably better than me because he was brought up with you know, um, you know, all, the, all the friends and who became you know, the clergy anyway. So, um, <laughs> good evening, Hannah. Oh, welcome. Janice, you know, good evening. Um, so, um, yeah, that was me. And then, um, as you know, South Korea, we are still, technically speaking, in war um, against the North Korea. The, the Korean War, um, which is quite deadly, and if you see the statistics, and, and um, it, it's much, much worse than any other wars. You know, Vietnam Wars, uh, World War II, of course, you know, it's, 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 it's a world war, but the Korean War is the proper, the first war during the Cold War, as, as, as a Cold War. So it was a deadly war. And then um, because of that, all men in, in South Korea, um, we had to actually serve. That's a national service. We, we, well, you know, those who experienced you know, the war in this country will remember those days. So I was drafted by um, the Korean government. I had to just serve um, in the army. I decided to go to the army. So I was in the army for two years and two months. And then that's when, um, you know, my father was, you know, the bankrupt and then the whole my family was, you know, collapsed. And, yeah, that was at the beginning of, you know, ups and downs, you know, humps in my life, you know, very tough. Um, my younger brother then um, was preparing the entrance exam um, to go to university, but he couldn't. <laughs> you can imagine. So he could not actually go to the university in that year, so he had to actually um, the delay one more year. And then all my family was absolutely shattered and then just bombarded by so many bad things. When I came out, when I um, came out from the army, and of course, you know, I had to find something. I wasn't able to go back to... Um, to the university, and my major was not the theology at all. It was, um, you know, um, you know, the business. 
but actually did my first degree, I went to the university to study the international you know, the trade. And then um, the, um, because of the restructuring of um, educational system, um, then it became a kind of larger um, you know, a pool. So the name has changed, but my first degree um, at the end, I got, um, it's, it's not theology, my first degree was um, well, still is um, a business, um, you know, um, the management. So I do have a bit of, you know, the business, you know, the background. And then after, you know, a couple of years, um, came out from the army. Whole career was, you know, financially was unstable. As a family, I wasn't be able to actually went back to university. So everything stopped, and I had to do everything. I had to do everything, and then. Um, I was working as a, a night shift clerk in um, convenience store shops, you know, you'd name it. I did, you know, quite. It was the, probably not the darkest hours of my year, but it was quite, you know, yeah, it was a bit of, you know, um, not very happy time. But we survived. And then um, I decided to make a big decision in my life. Yes. Um, this is my life. Now I know I won't be able to have this my life back. And then um, until then, I've been a good boy. So even studying the international trade, that was a recommendation from my father. And then, no, I'm not going to follow that route anymore. I'm going to be me. And that was my decision. It's a bit late, I think. Um, and it was just... 20s, early 20s, I should say. So I said to myself, and I thought, hold on a minute, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to live my life, my own life. What the hell? No one can tell me what to do. So I said, and then I really wanted to, well, I had to find something, you know. So I thought, I put this question, was, what is it? that I want to do until I die. And then my passion was in music, but I knew that I was too old to be trained as a proper musician. I was, I was in a band and I was, you know, had a long hair and it was in a rock band, I was playing, um, you know, the bass guitar, so rock, that was me. <laughs> Gosh, I can't remember. But still and however whatever you described the music was my passion so i decided in my early 20s to become a musician but as i said not the musician as someone who creates the music i knew that i was too late therefore the definition of musician for me is someone who transfer the music created by the musicians and then these musicians wrap them up and then sell them to the customers. Because I knew that I had a very sharp ears, good ears, so I decided, as a, as a second choice, really, you know, I, well, I can't go back to my music schools and then I couldn't actually start from the scratch. I'm early, you know, the 20s, so it was too late. So, okay, then second choice, okay. The still, I, I regard it as this, you know, job as, as a musician. So I decided to become a sound engineer. Yeah, sound engineer. And then that is the reason why I ended up being in this country. I still remember the day, the first day, 2001. I, I think that's the 1st of June, 2001. I landed at Heathrow Airport. Back then, as a student, I was allowed um, to work um, 20 hours per, work, per week because you know, it was a shortage of you know, the labor anyway. So then government allowed us to foreign students um, to be able to, um, to work and study. So I thought, okay, 
well, this is you know, the good country, and then this is the country of region, all the, um, the technology or the musical development or the, the, the genius you know, and ideas came from this country. So I thought, hang on a minute, I could go, I should actually go back to the UK and then to learn how to do the sound engineering properly. Australia was on my list. America, especially um, the north east side, you know, the west coast area, um, was on my list. And even um, the Japan was on my list. But I thought, hang on a minute, all these countries, I could go there, I could go there and I could learn something later. But I wanted to go to a country where I could learn the fundamental basics. So I picked London. I decided to come to London. And I came again, the 1st of June, 2001. When I first landed, um, everything was okay. My plan was to spend 10 years, finish my study, and then bringing that school network from this country, went back to um, you know, the South Korea, and I'm doing some business, probably using my father's network, maybe. And then that was my study plan, and then the business plan. So I had a plan. I had a very firm plan, and according to my plan, I thought, okay, three years, five years, you know, six years, and then I added, you know, a couple of more years, just in case. So, spending, um, if I just spend 10 years, I would be able to come back to the Korea, and then I would be able to um, do some, you know, the business, and then I could enjoy myself as a sound engineer. Well, at least, yeah. That was my plan. While I'm staying here, because of my father's networks, I was introduced um, um, to the then the Korean chaplaincy, which was um, then newly established in, um, in the St. Mary Magdalene's Church in Monster Square. That's, that's very close to a Camden. If you go to central London, if you see the map um, where there is a Regent Park, and if you see the east side of the Regent Park, and that is the area and the Melia White Hotel, that's the Spanish hotels. Um, the nearest tube station was Great Portland Street Station. So the, the St. Mary Magdalene Church was very close to there. So um, the Korean chaplaincy was established, and then there was um, a Korean chaplain. So then the Bishop of Seoul, um, knowing our family well, asked me, well, tell me, he told me um, to go there and then, um, you know, help him. So that was the beginning of me get involved with the church life in this country. And then, of course, you know, with, I spent you know, several years there, and then that was actually when I was also the worship leader. Yeah, ponytails, ponytails, worship leader, quite different from what I'm doing now. <laughs> That's when I used to actually use my guitar and, and to, to lead some worship, not mass, you know. <laughs> Very different from what I'm doing now. But anyway, so that was my life. Until still then, I didn't have a plan to become this. A dog color, <laughs> dog color, cross, no way, no way. I never dreamt of being a priest. But, strangely enough, you know, was, 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 was I a good boy? Uh, I was a bit naughty, you know, I have to, I have to admit that, you know, I'm, I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> don't ask anything, um, don't ask anything. But whatever I was doing, I was always in the church network, I think. That, that's for sure. And then I had a wish to support my church in whatever the way that I could do, I could think about. So that was for sure. And then one day, I had a... Um, you know, conversation with, you know, then my wife, you know, here, Helen. Um, and then she, well, you know, she asked me, she mentioned something about this vocation, doing, um, you know, um, doing some work in the church, as it were. You know. And then we decided to have a word with, um, with the vicar. And Father Martin Poole, um, is um, um, you know, Stephen's, you know, um, first godfather. And then he said, yeah, I think, you know, Tamin, you, you'd be a good priest. So I was really surprised. Well, really? Do you think so? Really? Oh. 
And he actually recommended me to the Bishop of Edmonton, um, the Bishop Peter Wheatley. Now he, he retired, and then many of you will still remember him. And that he, yeah, a long story. But anyway, so um, that was the beginning of my journey. I never had a dream of being, I never actually wanted to be a priest. Well, I knew my life, I knew me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I used to say that. But strangely enough, God called me into this country. Obviously, the reason was for me to study the sound engineering. But the journey of my life, I had ups and downs. I was doing some, um, I was organizing the cultural festivals, um, you know, the film festivals in, in, um, in Prince Charles Cinema in, in Soho. I was doing, um, you know, talks, um, you know, art exhibitions, etc., etc. And even I was um, organizing a rock concert in uh, Min Fiddler and the London Astoria. Now it's gone. The famous venue, the wonderful, the legendary venue, by the way. It's, it's all gone. And then that was in, in the, um, um, right in the, um, um, in the Tottenham Court Road. It's all gone now. That was me. But strangely enough, the Lord called me into the way which I never imagined before. I remember now what my father said on the day when I was leaving back in, in South Korea, back in the 2001. He said, um, well, no one knows, no one knows how God will lead you. What is the plan of God? I didn't actually, well, that, that didn't mean anything to me. But now, if I look back, <laughs> I can ask him, uh, I could ask this, you know, the questions. Dad, why did you say that? Why, why did you knew that I was going to the UK to study sound engineering? What, but why, why did you say that no one knows and whatever the future might be, blah, 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 may God lead my son, blah, blah. What, what, why, what did you think? My dad answered me, you know, he told me that, you know, he felt something. He thought, you know, who knows? Strange, but he never mentioned it, by the way. He never mentioned it. <laughs> so, if you are in, how can I put it? In your life, in your life, whatever the reasons, if you think you have lost your, um, you know, life's directions, don't worry too much. Don't worry too much. I am a good example. God loves you as God loved me, even me, okay? But one thing that I might need to say this as a condition is this. Whatever you do, if you're lost, that's absolutely fine. I, it doesn't mean that it's fine, but even if you feel you have lost, but the most important thing that you need to remember is this. Am, where, where am I? As long as you stay within that church boundary, I'm not saying this physical church, you know, the boundary of faith. As long as you remain in him, remain in the faith, whether that faith is deep or really wonderful, or whether that's a, just a little bit of, you know, the faith, it doesn't really matter. As long as you keep Jesus and the Lord, keep him as, as your Lord, he will lead your journey. That's what I can say. Because that's, that's my life. And that, who knows? You know, in my baptism, because, you know, in South Korea, we don't have Christian names. You know, because Christianity is not official, um, you, know, you know, religion. So I do have my name, Taemin. But at my baptism, my parents picked Abraham as my um, the baptismal name. So, and that's why I say, oh, you know, mom and dad, I, I know you miss me, and then you miss, you know, Stephen terribly, and then you miss my family and terribly, but, you know, it's all your fault, dad. 
<laughs> because you gave me a baptismal name of Abraham, and by the nature, Abraham, if we look back, you know, you, we know the story of Abraham, don't we? Abraham left his country, left the father's country, and then went to the place where God led him. What can I say? It's all your fault, Dad. <laughs> they laugh. They laugh. They laugh. Think about you know, Mark, well, Abraham's journey. You know? If you feel you're not sure about the future, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the, um, the terrible you know, the feeling of pain and then the sense of being beaten and then un, undervalued, whatever. Think about the life of Abraham. He listened and he left his home country. For them, leaving the home country is actually putting their life, their life in, in, at risk by then. Not like um, we traveling to Spain or moving from the UK to the Australia or somewhere. No, it's, it's more than that. Think about the life of Moses, for example. You know, the wonderful story of Exodus. Yeah, you go there. Yeah. Well, who knows? No one knew, no one knew what might happen. Think about the life of St. Paul's. Oh, yeah, yeah, you may argue with me. Oh, St. Paul, but, you know, he didn't actually go to the wilderness, but he led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's true. Holy Spirit led him, but he didn't know anything about the future. All of the stories, the important thing is they trusted. They put their trust in the Lord. And that was the lesson that I constantly, daily, if I'm lying, a bit, you know, trying to remind me. No one knows. Yeah, I'm struggling with anxiety. I'm, I hate this uncertainty. But sometimes I know, like if I look back at my life, this is not the life that I planned, but this is where I am now. So what can I say? I can only tell you my story and encourage you as I'm doing it to myself. So this is a, you know, a bit of you know, my story, and I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure we'll be able to have some you know, time in the future to, um, to share about my life or, or maybe about your lives. You know, who knows? You know, we all have different stories, and each one of us, our own story, it's precious because each story reveals the love of God and reveals the fact that God loves us. He is looking after us. And whenever we feel, oh, I'm, I'm down, I'm weak, I'm down, you know, what we need to do is just remember, never stop. Don't give up. If you give up, you'd be a fool. So let us remember that, my brothers and sisters. So um, we're going to sing a song. Ah, today... I prepared the screen. So I'm going to flip my camera. You can see. Yeah? So we are going to sing this one. And, and again, as I said, you know, a Lord is uh, my strength. And even um, when we are weak, and then if we put our trust in him, and he's not going to... Um, you know, um, he's not going to um, make us feel bad. <laughs> and and I quite like this one. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. Yeah. Let's fight a good fight. <laughs> Let's finish um, the race. So, tonight, on Friday, <laughs> we're going to sing this song together. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure.
seek you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel lord to give up i'd be a fool you are my all in all jesus lamb of god what is your name jesus lamb of god what is your name taking my sin my cross my shame Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, let Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. I need to be very careful with this guitar. It's not mine, it's um, the Ron's guitar. <laughs> Ron, I will clean this guitar and I will return it to you safely. <laughs> okay, um, dear my brothers and sisters, well, first of all, again, um, thank you for joining me and listening to my story. Um, and um, I wanted to actually um, share that, um, that message with a bit more eloquently, and that was my prayer, but man of little faith, I could not actually deliver it to you in a way that I wanted to. But I'm sure, you know, Holy Spirit will allow you to understand, will help you to understand um, what I was trying to do. Anyway, um, we're going to say, um, you know, a short prayer before um, we say good night and goodbye and God bless you to everybody. Now, let us pray. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we be defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And we say, um, you know, the grace um, you know, together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all, yeah, it's all for me um, tonight. What time is it now? Oh, we, we nearly, I can't really see it here. 35 minutes, 35 past 10. Um, I think it's time's up. Um, yes, um, I hope you have um, a quiet night. I know, um, you know, it's, tomorrow is, it's, it's um, Halloween, isn't it? Yeah. Tomorrow is Halloween. Oh, yes, yes, it's tomorrow. So it's going to be quite, you know, the noisy. But strange enough, I heard some, you know, bang, 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 you know, firework noise um, before. But while I was doing this live streaming, I think everybody is watching, you know, our live streaming here in this area. <laughs> it's deadly quiet. They may begin later. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being silly. Um, yeah, but, you know, if you have a plan to do some, you know, activities, you know, please make sure that you stay safe give some distance, I uh, probably I will end up doing some, you know, the fireworks um, early evening and with, you know, up to Stephen. And then we did, um, you know, carving, you know, pumpkin carvings. We, we did, um, we had a great fun. We changed, um, you know, the batteries of, um, you know, pumpkin light bulbs, you know, um, from, from Needle, I think, from last year. This is still, you know, that's just very cozy. So Stephen is very happy. I hope um, he's in bed now. Yeah, so that, that's all for me. And then, you know, whatever, you know, the life that you have, um, just, just be positive, okay? Just be positive and then, you know, just remember the Lord will, will, will lead, lead you and lead us. So I'm saying, um, you know, the good night, everyone. Um, I'm going to encourage you um, to say some, you know, the prayers um, led by the Holy Spirit, whatever comment that you find and whatever prayer that you want to offer to your family and friends of this family, you know, um, I'm going to leave it to you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Okay. <laughs> now it's the time for me to say goodbye, good night, and God bless you. My name is the Father Taming. I'm the vicar of the parish of St. George's Enfield. Good night. <laughs>